It's time for another edition of Singles Only Podcast. My name is Paul Farber. I am your host. This episode is done via Zoom. So pardon the sound quality, but it's a really fun one with my good friend, comedian Pratik Shrivastana. Very funny. He's got an album coming out on iTunes on December 22nd. Please check it out. We had a fun chat uh, before and after the Zoom. So you didn't catch the parts after Zoom, but all the good stuff was on during the Zoom. You'll love this episode. Please subscribe to us if you haven't already. Uh, Check out my website, Paul F. Comedy, for upcoming dates. And be safe out there. Um, That's it. Check out our sponsors. By now, you know that I'm a lawyer, right? Everyone does. And uh, I I don't really practice anymore, although I still have a license. Um, But when I need a lawyer, um, and I do often need a lawyer, um, I contact my friend Scott Shapiro. if you're injured uh, on the job or need compensation, you're entitled to payment for more than you know. A lot of times, companies will try to settle with you so you don't get a lawyer because they don't want you to know all the monies you're entitled to. Uh, Scott Shapiro has been uh, helping injured workers for over 20 years. In addition, his firm handles multiple other cases, including uh, personal injury cases and entertainment law issues. He has handled a lot of uh, my entertainment stuff as well as those of uh, guests on the show and listeners. So you need a lawyer. Sure, you can consult me. But uh, if you want a free consultation from the best, uh, don't take any chances. Contact my friend, Scott Shapiro. His number, 312-648- 8800 or check out his website scottshapirolegal.com there are other scott shapiros make sure you call the right one 312-648-8800 or scottshapirolegal.com tell him i sent you and he will be very happy okay it's time for another edition of singles only podcast my name is paul farvar we are doing this episode remotely uh on zoom because i'm in florida quarantined and uh, most people aren't. Uh, There's no voice of reason, but I'm really excited for our guest. Uh, He's a comedian. We started comedy together, I believe. Very funny guy. He's got a new album coming out. Uh, Please give it up for my friend, Pratik Srivastana. Hey, how's it everybody? What up? What up? What up? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. This is great. Good to be. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm enjoying. Uh, I had my birthday last Wednesday. I'm feeling good. I'm flying high. Happy birthday, Fatigue. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah, and I said up top, I don't know if it's, we started around the same time, right? Maybe you were before me. I don't know what class you were in, but. You know, I'm, uh, I, I don't even have a class. Like I kind of dabbled. I, I started doing open mics in 2009. Okay. Look, look at me. I'm saying 2009, but then I didn't really take it seriously till like late 2010. So. Okay. So you're before me, you're the class. So for those that, that listen, comedy is like classes in high school. So it's like, who's in your class, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I think you were before me, but anyway, you are uh, quarantined in Chicago, uh, yeah. in the, in the city or burbs or what? I'm quarantined about 40 minutes from the city in a little town called Lombard, Illinois. For- oh, hell yeah. <laughs> West <laughs> suburbs in the house. Western suburbs, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you went to York, right? No, I actually, so I'm part of unincorporated Lombard. So we had a choice between going through the Lombard schools and the Glen Ellen schools. And my parents were like, yo, Glen Ellen is supposedly better from what we hear. So they shipped me off the Glen Ellen schools. Uh, was that the Hilltoppers? That was, uh, yeah. So Glenbard West was the Hilltoppers. Uh, I went to Glenbard South, which South. was the, the, the Raiders. Yeah. Raiders. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you are uh, quarantined and are single. Is that accurate? Uh, uh, dangerously single, yes. <laughs> when you say dangerous, what do you mean by that? Like, have you been single for a while? It's been it's been over a year since okay. I've had a serious relationship. You know, there okay. was there was I was kind of talking to someone in in January of this year, uh, and it was starting to get a little serious. But then, for whatever reason, they just they just ghosted me literally two weeks before the lockdown. So. What could have been? How did you meet this person from January? Uh, the January person I met actually at a at a show at a at, a, at one of those uh private uh apartment shows that we've all I know you've done a bunch sure, of sure yeah too, yeah right? yeah oh that's a good way to meet people. I've noticed I I don't know about you but like I feel like 
the more substantial relationships I've had have been through meeting people after shows. Okay. I think it's easier for men that happens, but for women, I don't think that happens as much. So in your situation, ha- how many times would you say, uh, ballpark, have you met women after shows that have led to either relationships or like hookups or whatever? Probably like 10, 12 times. Okay. That's, that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. For, relationships, for, you know, it's, it's been a good, it's a good even mix of relationships and, and just, just having some fun. <laughs> That, so that's the PG way of saying you it. This woman after a show at one of those private events and you guys were talking from January to March. Uh, yeah. Like uh first week of March. Yeah. Right. And before. Seeing each other on the reg. What's up. We were seeing each other like once a week uh, in person. And then we were talking like every day on text. Okay. And then all of a sudden nothing. She just, she just straight up. Uh, she was just like, there was like, I think like literally on leap year uh, or cause it was like 29th. <laughs> Remember, she was just like, hey, like, I'm not feeling so well. So I don't know. I might be like, I might be not responsive for like a week or two. I'm like, all right, well, if you're not feeling well, I'm sorry. Hope you're feeling all right. I did the whole thing of like, hey, you want like some soup? Want me to bring something over? You want like, or just like to surprise her or something. She's like, no, I don't really want anything. I'm just, I'm not really feeling well. I I want to be left alone. So I'm like, all right. I know, look, I've been, I've been around the block long enough. I'm like, all right. I kind of see where this is going but I was still doing the gentlemanly cordially thing of like, Hey, you're right. And then I did a check-in on uh, uh, March 2nd or no, March 3rd was my sister's birthday. So I just did a quick check-in day of, I was off that day. So I did like a little afternoon check-in of, Hey, hope you're feeling all right. Uh, Sending good health vibes your way. One of my big uh, things that I like to text people, uh, sending good vibes your way, you know, sending health vibes, you know, I'm I'm big into that. (laughs) Sending good. Okay. And then no response. And then no response after that. And then uh, in court, and then I saw, so I just figured she's just straight up ghosted. And then in April, uh, I did get some developing uh, uh, text from her that was just like, uh, hey, uh, yeah, I kind of ghosted you. I just, I wasn't really feeling it. Sorry. Uh, good luck with your comedy and your writing. I got that. I got that old thing. Oh, um, so she sent you good vibes back at least. Some good vibes back. But yeah, she basically copped to ghosting me, which that happens too a lot is the, the post month copping of ghosting you know were you guys following each other on social media and stuff so you can make sure she wasn't like dead during that time so that, in April? okay that's the thing is she did not have any social media and that's what i kind of like that was kind of a i don't know like i'm kind of into people who don't have social media especially if you're not a performer or an entrepreneur and you're not on social media i think it's kind of exciting so okay <laughs> and then you had a you dated someone for a year before, a year before that, right? You said, yeah. So, la- and then in and in 2019, I was dating someone for about like eight months. And how'd you meet that person? That was also that was also at a really? show. <laughs> where was that? Where was that show that you met? That was uh, that was a show I used to put on uh, back in back in pre pre quarantine times. I used to produce a show at the old uh, Emerald City Coffee House in Uptown neighborhood. Okay. And it was one of those things where I just put up what I was doing to blast shows. And I'm sure you've done this too, is using the meetup uh, uh, website to kind of promote the show. So it was one of those things where she found out about the show through meetup. She lived in Uptown. Uh, I was uh, subletting in Uptown at the time and I'd spent a lot of time in Uptown. So I knew all the cool spots. We were both a fan of Vietnamese food and they, they had the great spots there. So that's literally our, our first date was a uh, good old pho. You know? Okay. And uh so you, you went up on your show, correct? Uh, both times you went up on the shows. Both times I went up on the show. And I was not hosting I, I, I went okay. either one of those shows. I think for the, for, the, <laughs> up, for, the, for the Emerald City show, I was closing it out, uh, uh, okay. which is- That helps. That helps. You know, you get, you get a little more time to breathe or whatever. And the, uh, I think at the apartment show, I was, I was a bullet. That was, a, I'll mention his name. It was Keegan, Keegan Buggenham. He was running an apartment show. Great, great comic in Chicago. Yeah. And he was just like, hey, Pratik, you're high energy. Can you go up first? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So it went up first. And then uh, I just remember, like, she kept looking at me, like, like during the other comic sets. So I was like, okay. This is on. Yeah, something's happening. Yeah. And I'm assuming you had good sets at both of these shows. Great. Uh, it, I, I think the apartment show was, I would rate the apartment show like a B minus. But, you know, yeah. I bring the energy. And I think it was one of those things where the crowd was weird all night. So uh, I don't know. She, But I she mean, kept saying... She kept saying that like I had, oh my God, you were so funny. You have so much energy. You know, that that's the big thing I seem to get a response to is you have so much energy. Ah, ah you know, which 
it would be weird if like you bombed and then like you meet all these girls like it's just like a sympathy <laughs> it's like you're like yeah I, I mean if i have a good set it's great but if i bomb i seem to meet like the greatest women like that would be I, a good thing to happen i would love i would love the uh the sympathy bomb talk but i never whenever i don't do well i i know i'm not getting any response because literally i'll do that thing where I'll stand by the doorway of the venue yeah. and I'll be like, Hey, have a, have a great night. Thank you for coming. And I'll see like, no eye contact, no eye contact, no eye contact. So for me, the sympathy bomb romantic thing does not, that just goes over. <laughs> yeah. If, if I know I bomb after a show, I usually don't stand by the door, but then if I feel like if you do stand at the door uh, and you had a good set, but then they, they, someone next to you bombed and then everyone's like, Hey, you guys did great. I'm like, wait, don't, put me with yeah them. like you're like fuck this i actually had a good set but i mean it works both ways i mean i mean the worst is when you do a show you're talking to somebody afterwards and the comical bombs tries to needle their way into the yeah. conversation it's like you didn't even kill on stage you're trying to kill in this conversation get, get out of here. here what um what's the longest relationship you've had was it the one year thing or did you have a longer one when you were younger i had another uh uh it was like year and a month <laughs> that was like that was like two three years ago that was definitely yeah. the longest uh relationship were you in in high school at, when you were a, a raider at the glenbark south area were you uh were you dating girls there or were you kind of like an out, out outcast i was so it's funny is i never like fully had a serious relationship with anyone in high school but i was senior year uh right around like that march you know that March to May when like prom is in session in senior year, yeah. people are starting to pair off a little bit. I definitely was talking to somebody uh, at that time, and it was it was it was going kind of well. But then what happened was is her parents didn't want her to go to prom for whatever reason. Uh, so then that just kind of it just kind of dropped off right after that, which I found weird because I was like, yeah, okay, we don't have to go to prom. That's like besides the point. That's like two percent. I'm. I just like want to get to know you, but she like literally dropped off right after that. Do I you, deal with that a lot where people wait, just drop off. That, do you think that maybe she lied about the prom thing? Do you ever think that? Like that was just an excuse to stop talking to you? In hindsight, maybe, <laughs> yeah. But she just wasn't feeling me or whatever. Uh, and she also moved like literally a month into the summer, like right after graduation. Maybe so that's that, what she knew was coming, so. Yeah, she knew what was coming. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to I, I have tried to find her on Facebook. I think we were Facebook friends for a while. And then I think she just like jumped off Facebook. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I always I, I always go back to the girls I had crushes and uh, on Facebook and try to start that up again. And just successfully did it, by the way, uh, a few times. Uh, Hell yeah. Big ups to yeah. you. You know what helps, though, is having like because say you reconnect with someone from high school or something you know you, there's that awkward kind of thing but saying hey i have a show i do stand up i think that's a great icebreaker for you know people want to come out people want to have a good time you know i think yeah i think that that that's what got a lot of people to to start following me on instagram and facebook from my high school days because they're like oh this is cool he's he's doing a lot of cool things but uh yeah like you still like i always throw it in their face like yeah you guys wouldn't give me the time of day when I was in high school, but mm -hmm. um, that but, happened. I remember like one time, like we, we were running a show for a while that you got to do Simmer Brown. Uh, oh yeah. 20, Great show. 2015, 2016. And so there would be like, there'd be a couple people from, uh, from, from college uh, who, who, who heard about the show through the grapevine and were coming through. And there was definitely a little bit of like, yeah, going to rub it in their faces. Like, yep. You could have, could have been with all, all this. this. <laughs> yeah. Are you, um, are, are you, what is the common uh, commonality of these women, other than meeting them at shows, that you uh, notice? Are there is there something, whether it's physical or their job or what? Like, are you dating? Are you dating people of the same ethnicity? What's your what's your what's your? It's story? a it's a good mix. I mean, I'm I know you know you're also of the of the brown persuasion. I feel yes. like we know people on the extreme sides of that, where they're either they only date their race if they're brown or Persian or Indian or whatever, or they're the opposite where they had one bad experience with one person of the race and they're like anti brown and they'll just only date white people now. Whereas me, I'm like, how can you judge a whole group of people? Off yeah. of a couple of bad experiences. I'm very open-minded still, you know, if it flows, if it's connecting, it doesn't matter what the person looks like. Do so your parents want you to date an Indian woman or anything like that? At, I think maybe when I was in high school, they slightly preferred that, but now they really don't care. Now they're just like, Hey, find someone. Don't be alone. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, for me, 
I think that I typically date women who aren't uh, of my ethnicity. In fact, like you said, there's a lot of ethnocentrism in the Iranian world. Oh yeah. And when I'd go to LA, LA, LA has a huge Iranian community and, and people are like, who are you? Like, wh why are you hanging out with these white people? It's like, it was, it, they're very, it's very bizarre. And I know the Indian community is like that a little bit too. Oh, not, yeah. not as much, but, um, but yeah, like, I feel like, and, and for me, if you look at physicality of, of women I've dated, they're mostly like very like pale white women that I've dated <laughs> with blonde or red hair or, you know, that's typically the, the norm, but who knows? Do I think you, statistically I've probably dated more, more uh, white women, but I've definitely tried to mix it up with, with black Latino, you know, yeah. I don't, I'm never like, I, I always joke that, you know, what my type is whoever's into me. That's really yeah, what like, I <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Like, I'm pretty, I, I try to keep it broad just because, you know, you don't, you, it's just good to mix it up sometimes personality wise. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I will say, I will say this though, in regards to kind of like leaning more towards non-Indian, non-Persian, non-your race. I will say, I do think the, the comedy arts thing kind of plays a little bit of factor and I'm not generalizing right. all women, but I will say that I've had more, uh, if there's any group of women that maybe is a, like not opposed, but like not into like, oh, comedy is your only thing or, right uh, it's indian south asian you know? yeah oh absolutely i think that they're all like okay well what are you gonna do when this doesn't work out i'm like i just fucking left a job where i was a lawyer i'm gonna try to make this work and i'm like yeah. yeah the the middle eastern and the indian communities they're so like set on having a job with status right like a status status job as a lawyer engineer doctor so yeah, I get that. I get that. I think. But then also, you know, it's it's funny with like, okay, so for example, like with Indian comedy, like we have a few, even in the Iranian community, there are a few comedians that are making a name now. So they might do that thing. Like for, like if I, like I was, I think I was talking to somebody in, like, I, you know, just messing around on Tinder, talking to somebody and they were like, oh, do you know Hassan Minaj? Like they just assume that we all just yeah, hang out in the other. same, yeah. <laughs> we all know each other. But at the same time, she was also like, a, well, yeah, he's on TV. He's doing it. Yeah. You, it's like, <laughs> I'm still doing it though. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it, it is that kind of, it's, it's not insulting in a way, but it's also just like, yo, we're out here. We out here too, Paul. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Are you speaking of Tinder? Are you using the apps uh, during COVID or pre COVID? Is that another way you meet people? So COVID has been going on for so long. So yeah, at the, at, at the, uh, I think I dropped, I, I, I deactivated Tinder around uh, uh, July of this year, but I, I had it on going pretty frequently in March. And then I was using Bumble uh, premium. Ooh, I'm springing for the Bumble premium. Uh, uh, I pretty much activated Bumble premium from September. And then, yeah, I might keep it going through through January just to okay. see what's going on. You know, what about right? Hinge? You don't use Hinge? I was using Hinge for a while, but I'll be honest, like I get, and then the, we, we could even, this is a whole other rabbit hole of a conversation, but, but Asian men, I mean, you've read those studies, right? That Asian men, brown men do get less matches on certain apps than, than right. people of other races, but on Hinge, I'll get like, I'll get like you know one to two matches. Like really, how many swipes I get? I'm 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 going I'm going scarce on Hinge. I feel like I'm in the desert on Hinge. Like very I didn't, little. I match. didn't know about that statistic. That's interesting. It could just be me. <laughs> it, it could be the fatigue factor. Maybe they either. don't know what the fuck I am because I I I think I did the I've dated more people on Hinge than I had on any of the other. Apps. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, for sure. And I also like it because there's, there's so much information that's provided for you that there's no surprises like two dates in where you're like, oh, oh, you are, uh, you know, you're a COVID denier. It's cool. It's like, you know. <laughs> Or you're like, you're like, you're one of those people that you're, you're looking for dates that you want to save. Like you're one of those religious people. Like, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. If they're, if they, on, uh, on Hinge, there's like two or three deal breakers for me that I'll be like, okay, that's good that it's provided that information for me. Cause now I know that I'm not gonna, you know, you right. can categorize them as a no right away, but. Not it. I think I, I I will say though on Hinge, like it's one of those things where you're messaging, like I'll definitely get like one or two matches or whatever a, a week or whatever. But then it's like, you know, you're talking to someone and then you think it's going well and then just immediate drop off. And yeah, I've just is, noticed that more on Hinge than any of the others. Well, the thing with all these apps, to be honest, was I was using them so often when we had shows, right? Where the only time I, like, it was kind of like a comfort for me to go on those apps while you're on, you know, waiting to go on stage. Like that was like my, just 
distract her from like, you know, I probably should have gone over my set, but I'm just like, <laughs> I need some positive energy before I go on here and see if someone, you know, you start sweating, right. humble. Yeah. And then you contact, but then when we didn't have shows, I wasn't going on those apps every day. Anymore. Interesting. And, uh, and then you, and then I'd go into like months without talking to someone. And then recently I went back on a lot of them to be like, Hey, you know, did we break up? Cause it'd be like three or four months. And they're like, <laughs> and nine out of 10 of the times I was the last one to like not respond. So I was like, Oh, uh, sorry. Whoop. Yeah. Th- is that something that you, but you're pretty active on there. If you see a match, you're, you stay on board. I'm staying on board or at least like until my biggest thing is if you're messaging, there's only so much you can, you can find out of a person yeah. messaging. I'd rather take the, take the chance and meet the person face to face. Even if it doesn't go well, there is that satisfaction of, Hey, met the person face to face. There's only so much you can gauge. You're right though. On hinge, you can gauge a little bit more from the messages than, than on Bumble. Uh, so, but, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm just like, I need the, or maybe it's the comic instinct of, Hey, this dinner might, even if it doesn't work out as a right. date, might be a bit out of it. So I'm always like, just meet the person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get no, I agree with that. Get some food. You know what I mean? So I'm always like, even if I'm not feeling the person, I'm like, eh, just go meet them. And yeah, then figure. I, I always say that, but then I 90% times I like, I'm just waiting for them to cancel. Cause I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to fucking do this like 90%. Um, and then especially during, at least in the beginning of COVID, it was like, oh, I kind of want to meet someone right now. Like, who Oh, knows? yeah, yeah. Right now is completely different. And I, and when I say I'm erring on the side of meeting, that's when it's the summertime. Like, if it was the dead of winter, uh, like pre-COVID, I'd still not want to do that. I'm like, did no. You, did you go on any dates during COVID? Like, outdoor, whatever? I haven't done outdoor, but I have been. I, we, there, there has been some some virtual uh, intermingling. Oh, really? we've been doing we've been doing zoom has been a good friend <laughs> yeah uh my friend uh or, you know fahim anwar a comedian yeah great joke about how he loved the uh dating during quarantine because they're like you save so much money you're like let's go feed the ducks like we could do because like, <laughs> you you're just like you don't have to spend any money everything was closed in la especially so yeah that's why i'm able to afford <laughs> bumble premium right now because i don't have to <laughs> there you go yeah i mean you don't have- are you looking, what do you, what is your goal with all this stuff? Are you looking to get married and, and, uh, and have kids or something? Is that the end so, goal? So definitely. So it's one of those things where like, you know, I've been going back and forth about kids uh, this year, especially where I'm just like, you know, yeah. Do I get along with kids? Yeah. Do I eventually want kids? Yes. But I just feel like right now, like, ooh, I don't want to, I, I, my hat's off to anyone who has kids right now. Oh in yeah. The world right now it's just like, you know, if I, I definitely am like, if I want to have kids, it's going to be like after things are normal and then some, like, um, we're putting up, we're putting a pin on this for, for a while, you know, it's, well, I mean, things are going to be back to normal by the summer. I mean, we're going to have a new normal, but it's not going finger, to be- fingers crossed. Really? <laughs> we'll I mean, I, I guess I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty confident in the science behind all this stuff, but I mean, it's going to be a new normal for sure. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, like normal, normal, but like, I'm thinking about like schools, like I don't Oh like, yeah. For the parents right now with with kids like trying to do e-learning like my hat's off to them i because i used to do teaching so i know a little bit about like how that stuff works yeah it's just... well it's funny because all those people that were like when are you gonna have married and get kids ball like nobody was talking shit when covid started there is yep. our YouTube. time is now paul <laughs> <laughs> like like what are you doing right now what are you wearing i'm like jesus relax like um but yeah i mean but you do want to get married is that is that something that you definitely think you want to do I definitely, you know, it, it's one of those things where I, I love that companionship and it really comes down to if the person I'm with, if I'm really having a connection with them and they're also open to the idea of marriage, let's do it. You know, I'm, I'm definitely of the mind where, you know, I don't, I don't want to just get married for the sake of getting married. I feel like we all, especially in our respective communities, we know a lot of people who got married just for the sake of it. And so that I'm a little turned off to now. And also like, here's the other thing, like, you know, with my parents in particular, like, yeah, the Indian stereotype is to, hey, get married, have kids. But I think in more recent times, my parents are like, yeah, just we do want you to be with someone eventually, but they're not pushing for like, get married this year. Hey, you're getting up there in age. It's more just yeah. like, you know, we do want you to have somebody, but we also don't want you to just like fall into marriage. It's, it's yeah. so it's so interesting. They're not pushing me to like go on the Indian matchmaking apps or anything. Uh, and is I know some people matchmaking app. Is there such a thing? 
it's called shadi.com so shadi is the hindi word for wedding and so yeah that's that's a real thing shadi.com is, is it just moms swiping left and right for their <laughs> yeah moms just make the pro the moms are matching up that's all it is i had a joke about that years ago called i go it's tinder i think it's called tindia is what i <laughs> called it and i was like i didn't really think there was a thing that that was doing it that's hilarious it's, it's a real thing and then um I think there's other, you know, there was that Netflix show that was popular in the beginning of COVID, uh, Indian matchmaker, like these matchmaking services, not just apps, but like you can actually go talk to somebody uh, and they like use like your astrological signs and they look at their database of, of, uh, of matches and they try to coordinate and they figure How out like- you, you can't even qualify, Pratik, no offense, but like, <laughs> don't they have like requirements for the men to have like at least- two degrees <laughs> like I, don't know. I mean i do have two bachelor degrees <laughs> but, yeah, all, but you're right no like they and also there's the other thing about like i was looking into that a little bit just for curiosity's sake not because yeah. i'm seriously interested but it feels like more of the people on those matchmaking sites are just a little bit older than me like they're you know i'm i'm like i just turned 34 like but like okay. some of the people yeah. on these apps are like you know 39 40 which hey i'm all about i'm all about you know older older uh, knowledge is power paul i'm all about Amen. the older yeah older people Maybe you can find like a like a doctor indian doctor woman and then you could be the stay-at-home dad who takes care of the kids and does shows at night like that's a fucking dream that's that's my secret dream i'm and my secret i mean i'm telling you so I, yeah i'm all about, about that there's a there's a guy who i mean he still does comedy a little bit but uh john id he used to live here and now he, he used to come yeah. to your old uh, yeah i know but, john yeah, great guy. And yeah, that's his setup. This is why he's a doctor and it's the greatest setup ever. I I and I'm like he's a better Indian than me. He found the right <laughs> He found the right wife. He found the doctor wife. I'll happily be the kid the guy with the the kids or whatever. I'll happily do that. Yeah, so there is that thing that a lot of cuz I was dating somebody who was a lawyer for a while and what she said was, "Oh, all the guys I'm with are insecure about me making more money than them." And I was like I was trying to assure her that I have no problems with that whatsoever. Yeah, no, I, 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 I tend to date professional women. Um, and I'm just like, okay, I, I think it just makes more sense for me because they're also very busy. And I think like, yes, as comedians, it's like you have to have someone that has either children or are passionate about whatever they're pursuing. Their job. Oh, they're not going to get, they're not going to get what we're doing. So. And that's what I, you know, to talk about what you were asking about earlier about like what I kind of look for is I definitely look for somebody who is a professional or, or passionate about their job, or, you know, we'll talk about how like, oh, I dated guys and they, they just want to be with me all the time. Like I need my space. I'm like, yep, that's perfect. Yeah. We both need our space. <laughs> have you dated anyone in the arts or like comedians in the past? I have dated uh, comedians in the past and look, it's, it's something, I, I don't know if you've messed around with comedians, but look. Sometimes, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm not stringently opposed to it ever again, but I've just found the experiences I've had haven't been necessarily ideal. So right now it's kind of on the back burner, but I'm not opposed to it. I maybe not necessarily a comic, but like a musician or someone who's like yeah. a tangential art form. I think that would be more. I always push comedians to date uh, musicians and we've had musicians, musicians on the show purposely to try to see if we could <laughs> I don't think you should date other comedians. That's that's just been my rule. Yeah. Um, obviously, sometimes it happens where you, it works, but nine out of ten times it, it doesn't. It's work. not working. It's just like any career, you know. Oh yeah. You don't fuck where you where you sleep or whatever. No. You don't, don't fuck where you sleep. sleep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think one of the things though is like comedians just gotta. If, if there is a comedian couple out there that's working, I think the biggest thing is they gotta root, be able to root for each other. You know. Yeah. If you're if you're already both established, I think it's okay. But if you're both like hustling, it's a, uh, it's not going to end well. It it just doesn't unless like one of one of them quits comedy. I think that's, that's the hard thing too. Like you know, like you know, you'll see like you know a famous comedian who's who's looking for love and maybe they're interested in a comic, but it's also like they probably want to date a comic if they do on their level. They don't want to date like a newer comic because then it's like, are they interested in them yeah. for the career boost or something? Like you got to think about that. I, uh, I used to do a fake comedy class at the Laugh Factory with all the interns there. And I'd give them all, <laughs> every week, I'd give them a new piece of advice. And sometimes it would be good. Like, it would be like, all right, don't run the light, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I was, one of the things that I first said and and was don't, don't fuck anyone in the, don't date or fuck anyone in the comedy world 
<laughs> unless they're ahead of you and can get you jobs. Yeah. <laughs> that was like a joke I did. And then, um, and then they always used to bring it up because actually one of the guys is, uh, is dating another established comedian. So it's kind of funny that I was like, oh, your, your situation's okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm glad they're taking your advice. <laughs> I was like, that, that works. That's why it's okay. But it's funny that that's, that's something I said. Are you, um, what are the things that you've learned, whether it's through the meeting girls after shows or the apps, what is it that you know now that you can't do again? Like if, if what's like a deal breaker, you're like, I can't, I can't even fake be into this. I just, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, if I'm talking to someone and they just, they, what I found sometimes is people like to ask, uh, about like family stuff or they'll be like, uh, Oh, like if they're not, if they're not South Asian or Indian, for example, they, they tend to just ask a lot of like, if they're really interested, they'll ask like curious questions about like, Hey, are your parents into not you dating non-Indian or whatever? And that's fine. But what I've also found is people like try to get those invasive questions in there. Like, Oh, are you like secretly having a bunch of like uh, uh, wives on the side or something? Or they'll, They'll just ask like very like, oh, are your parents going to like be pissed off if I eat beef or something? And it's just like, I've just found like those are the telltale signs for me. Like you don't have to ask, like there's a way to ask those type of questions, but not in a shitty way. And I just, I need to, I need to stop uh, thinking with uh, my, my dick and more with, yeah. uh, you know, the moral stuff. I think that's the biggest thing. That's the ignorance. Yeah. There's still ignorance out there. Have you, has that happened to you? Like where people have said that? I, yeah, I was dating someone where it was just, this was the, the, yeah, the last one in 2019 where she would make some comments sometimes like, oh, because uh, I don't I don't eat beef. Uh, and then so actually this year, I've actually stopped eating meat altogether. But back oh, last year, I was still eating chicken. And she'd be like, oh, I ate beef by mistake. Are you going to punish me now? It's like that. And she was she was like trying to be. It's one of those things where I think she was making that comment to be funny. This like need to be funny. It's like, no, I don't need you to be funny. You can talk like a normal person. It was just, yeah. it, was just a, it turned me off completely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's. It's fun when you get older and your dick doesn't run your life anymore. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's the one thing about that's, that's great about this now that I, that I like about getting older and stuff. So have you had any dates where you're just like, where you're like, like you said it earlier, where you're like, oh, at least this is going to turn into a bit. Like, has that actually happened where you're like, okay, this could turn into a bit? Yeah, I had somebody, uh, this is just like a, this is actually the one, the one hit, the, I've only had like, four or five matches on hinge that we actually went out once just to uh see what was going on well, done, but, yeah. Uh, yeah so this was one she uh she was on hinge we went to uh the old uh pick me up cafe in in wrigleyville now in uptown yeah yeah, uh, yeah. great that's place. definitely been a that's been a big first date spot for me in the old I love that place. <laughs> yeah it, it's a great it's homely you know good vibes uh so we were talking we were eating and then she was just like uh Hey, I have to tell you something. And she kind of looked around before saying that, which is not a good sign. That's also another warning sign. If you don't have to look around before saying, Hey, I have to tell you something. She said, middle of the meal, uh, I look like her dead father, or, or I look like her father that died at sea. What? That's and so I literally died, that's at just, sea? died at sea. And so I was just like, I was like, I was kind of shocked for a second. I didn't know what to say. Then I was just like, uh, well, I am going on a cruise soon. So, you know, it's good <laughs> that you told me. So that what, became, she that be, became. Was she trying to be funny or like? That was the thing I ended up after saying the cruise thing. I was just like, are you being serious? You're just trying to be funny, you know? And she was like, no, I'm totally serious. You look like my father who died at sea. And here's our thing. She wasn't even Indian. So it's like how I asked her, I'm like, why are you saying this? And she's just like, yeah, my dark my dad was just darker, kind of, you know. I think she was like, she was like her dad was like Italian, and I guess Italians kind of look as dark as us. So I don't, I don't know. But it was just, it was just uh, weird. What, what's the how did he die at sea? Like, I don't even know what that's. Was he? Was this like in the nineteen forties? Like, what, <laughs> he, and who says it like that? Like, I don't remember any deaths in statistically happening at sea. I kept at, I kept trying to pry into after like the initial shock and towards the end of the meal, I knew it was, this was going to be the one, one and done date or whatever, but I was like, then I was like kind of in curious mode. I was like, okay, wait, did he get like, did he actually like die at sea is like the shipwreck or he got food poisoning. Everybody else survived. He just yeah. died at sea. Uh, and she kind of gave me like, she was trying to be vague about it. Then she was like, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. And I'm like, all right. So you brought I, it up. She yeah. brought it up. 
but I was like, ugh, like, I don't want to be that guy. But part of me was like, yeah, you brought it up, and now I'm the asshole for bringing it up. So, like, what the fuck, Paul? But nobody says he died at sea. Like, unless they're in, like, a in like a talkie that just came out in, in the 20s. Like, who fucking says that? Like, President, Eino- President Eisenhower was talking about the war rations, and we died at sea. <laughs> who says that? And, yeah, like... Oh man, we have to find this woman. I, I <laughs> no, I have so many questions. I will, uh, I will scroll through the old hinge and see if she's uh, still active. <laughs> uh, then I had, I mean, this wasn't really as funny. This was just like you know a lot of too much information in the first date. But uh, one person I was talking to, this was a Bumble match. Uh, she revealed she had cancer, like in the middle of the oh, first date. You know? That's not good. Were you like, how bad is it? <laughs> I mean, I think I asked, like, are you in remission or what, what yeah, stage yeah. are you in? And she was like, yeah, she was in remission. She was just like, yeah, I like to tell people up top because, you know, uh, uh, I just I rather get out of the way. And I respected that. Uh, that was a weird date uh, because uh, we went to it started out like a, it was supposed to be an evening. It was a Sunday evening thing. But then uh, I got added to a, I got added to a show, Paul. And I was like, you know what? I got to do the show. So I told her hey, I got the show. Let's meet in the afternoon. So we went to a beatnik lounge, uh, the one off the Chicago blue line, uh, big ups to my boy, Josh McQuan. Uh, he works there. Uh, go there. He'll, We're going to edit this out. We can't give out free sponsorships, but okay. <laughs> I went to pick me up, go, but this is too, come on. You this is too much. <laughs> but, uh, so we went there at noon, did the whole brunch thing. It was fine. Then I was like, all right, I got to go to the show. She's like, Oh, I want to come. So literally first day, she went to see me at the show and I, I'll have to admit I was a little nervous for that set because sure. it it's uh. but then I was also like, and it was, it was funny, a couple of comics that were there were like, why'd you ring a first date? But I was like, you know what? Kind of like uh, in lieu of her with the her cancer diagnosis. I'm mean, you know what? Let me get it out there. At least she knows now I do comedy and uh, I had a pretty damn good set. I actually, yeah. I was flowing then. I was firing off all cylinders. And I had that, I had that good buzz going because of all the day drinking. So it was like those good buzz flowing sets. Uh, and we even uh, shared a nice kiss after after the uh, show went well. Uh, then we had a the second date, total disaster. That just that just happens. Just we were just conversation was like not mashing together at all. Like she said, she played volleyball, so I tried to make a joke about volleyball, and she was like, "Oh, that's not funny." So I'm like, "Whoa!" So like a complete 180. I even said like at one point in the conversation, I'm like, "Man." First date went so good. This is just like tanking. She's like, yeah, kind of. So we just kind of ended it. You know, wow. I think uh, I think I got the check even. We even wait for dinner. But yeah, like just it was one of those things where it just wasn't vibing. Like yeah, that, first that day. sucks. Did uh did uh is she okay now? Do we know? Like should her cancer go away? Uh, did uh, she go on a cruise and die at sea? Like we don't. Know. <laughs> does that. it count as a death at sea? I don't even know. That that C. Uh, that that sounds like a uh, uh, one of those like a uh, special edition Monopoly pieces where instead of going to jail, you die at sea. <laughs> no free parking for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully she's okay. And, and so just- I, I think her Bumble profile is still active. So hopefully yeah. she's alive. Yeah. So I, hope so, yeah. Yeah. I hope so too for her sake and and and, uh, and and just tell her to avoid any boats for a while. Avoid um, boats. Avoid everything. Pratik, that was fucking fun. It was so good to see you and talk to, to you again. Hell yeah, man. We haven't talked person. much in quarantine, so it's yeah. been good. Yeah, where can um where can people find out about you? I know you got your album coming out as well. Um, and we got a show together that you that you mentioned. First tell us the album, because that's the most important. Uh, when's that coming out? Where how can people get it? So the album is called uh, Nick and Sheila's Kid. It's named after my parents. Uh, we recorded it uh, on their anniversary. You know, it's about a lot of stories about them. It's a very family oriented album, which is why I'm like, yo, let's release it around the holidays. Everybody's got families or Absolutely. everybody has their family. So perfect for that. Uh, it'll be coming out December 22nd, but you can pre-order it now on iTunes and Amazon. And uh, you can find out the information for my album on my website, Pratik Comedy. That's P-R-A-T-E-E-K comedy.com and if you pre-order the album on itunes uh my parents and i will send you a personalized video so that's, no, that's awesome yeah, where did you record yeah. the album at where'd you record we, it we recorded at the old uh, bug house theater baby oh, yeah on awesome. irving park great venue shout out to but i know i'm shouting out all these places yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, hell yeah and uh and uh they can find you people can follow you at where on instagram 
Are you on, on Instagram at Pratik Comedy, P R A T E E K Comedy? I feel the need to spell my name a lot. Yeah, so. it's going to be on there. And uh, and then we have a show. You said it's a fundraiser, December eighteenth. To yeah, I'm I'm really excited out. about that show. It's it's called a Thirty Four for Thirty Four. We'll have thirty four performers uh, in honor of me turning thirty four. It's a virtual show, so it'll be streamed on Facebook and it'll be on Zoom. And yeah, we're raising money for St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. Awesome. So many great performers. You're going to be on there. So many performers from LA. And if people want to donate, they can donate straight at stjudes.org slash donate. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Pratik, uh, good luck with everything. And uh, I hope uh, once this is all over, you, you find love and don't get ghosted. <laughs> uh, and and I, I do want to have you back on uh, in person when, when yes. we're done with all this. And uh and give an update on, on your, on your love, on your love pursuit. Absolutely. I, I love to come back, man. And Paul, you've been a good dude. I love performing with you over the years and I hope we get to perform soon. And uh, thank you again for letting me do this. Likewise, likewise. Uh, hang on for a second when I hang up this thing, but uh, thank you all for listening to another edition of singles only podcast. Please check out uh, Pratik's album coming out, Pratik comedy. Uh, give us a like, a subscribe and review us. If you haven't lately, check out our, our sponsors and, uh, and thank you all seriously for, for, for all the love we've gotten recently. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Before I succumbed to the pressures of getting Netflix and Hulu, I was an avid reader. I still am, but I'm behind on my books. I used to read a bunch of books, mostly memoirs, biographies, uh, nonfiction stuff. And uh, as you all know, one of my favorite books is uh, Perfect Pain by Param Parasaran, a good friend of mine. Uh, it's an awesome memoir about, and it's a true story, um, about how he fled Iran as a child and uh, lived up this perfect life that we all uh, are sold um, as a multimillionaire uh, successful businessman. But he had an underlying pain and issues that he had not resolved, and this is what he did on his journey. It's an amazing book. Um, I, I can't tell you how awesome it is. If you haven't read it already, I strongly recommend it. And and I still have some free books to give away too. So for you listeners, subscribers, if you give us a five-star review, I will send you a free book. I've got about seven left right now. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great book, perfectpain.com, available on Amazon. It has been discounted uh, because he wants to get rid of his batch of books. Perfectpain.com or go to Amazon, get the book. And if you've read the book already, give him a review too. Um, we want to give him the far of our bump. Um, perfectpain.com by Param Parastron, um, or message me and I can maybe send you a book for the right price for free. No, I'm just kidding. Perfectpain.com. Still stay